Brad and Puff here from 98.7 Amp Radio. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa. Don't step on it. Now, proper mic technique. Always know that. Hold it down here because a lot of people hold it like they're rapping. <laughs> also, you want to talk too into it. <laughs> So uh, a little bit uh, about us. Um, our real names are Jeff and Josh. We actually met at the sixth grade lunch table. He asked at the sixth grade lunch table if anybody wanted to come swim in his pool. Um, at that time, he had a very, very high-pitched voice. Um, How high? It was pretty high. Pretty high. So I'm you could. Like it's one of those high-pitched voices where you turn your head, Hello. you know, and you go. You think it's a girl asking you to swim that was, in the pool. That's about and right. It's a, yeah. And then. Uh, then we wound up, you know, being friends all throughout school. We wound up uh, going to a college together, and um, actually, they didn't the, accept it. They were just going there. No, but actually, <laughs> we just wandered in. Actually, a uh, they had a college radio station at our college, and the guy who actually thought we would be good for it was the guy who was cheating with your girlfriend at the time. But, 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 but wasn't my girlfriend, it's who I went to prom with. But you liked her. I had a crush. All right. So at the time, it's just so ironic and funny how it all came together. And then from college radio, we were there for a couple of years. And then we wound up saying, hey, we want to intern. And this was in Philadelphia. And um, we wanted to be interns. They were looking for interns. We heard it on the radio. So every day for at least three weeks, we would just drive up, sit in front of the building, Call the request line, oh call it, God. call it, call it, till they would let us in. And then eventually they let us in. Uh, we started, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stunts, things on the streets, and then wound up board hopping, running the boards, listening to oldies on our Friday and Saturday nights, doing that for hours and hours, and then it just uh, all spiraled from there. Like when we first found radio, it was different for us because we weren't the most popular. We weren't the nerdiest kids, which I hate. I don't like to label things ever, but you know what I mean by that. And it was just something where we felt comfortable. We were friends, we always had a good time, and we weren't like super radio nerds. Now in our industry, there's two types of people. Mm -hmm. There are the regular personalities like ourselves, and then you have personalities that are really difficult to talk to. If you ever talk to a really seasoned radio personality, they generally just talk radio. That's all they'll talk. They talk your ear off. Those are the radio nerds. I have difficulty talking to them because <laughs> I just want to be like, hey, what do you do for fun? Do you have someone that you spend your life with? Are you a cat person, a dog person? I just got this new microphone, and the microphone's pretty awesome. Oh, stop it with the mic talk. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care about your processor. I want to know the process that goes on in your brain when you're doing your show. Talk to me. Yeah. 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 Why, why, why do you do what you do? I think our success, and uh, we'll talk about that real brief, uh, came because we were just two normal guys that were friends and just really found love for radio. And that's generally our success. And some people have a difficulty uh, in our industry seeing that. Some people are like, well, uh, you have to get fired 300 times from market 300 and uh, move your way up. And me and him started in Philly, which is a really big market in radio and TV and media in general. And we, we both worked in TV and radio. Um, but what, what I think is the most interesting is uh, how, how our show really took off. And I don't really see it. I should say I didn't really see it when we were younger in radio how other personalities around the country looked at us and they tried to mimic us and I was getting a lot of emails and messages and phone calls and making a lot of friends and people picking my brain because I was just like, this is cool. So-and-so from New York City is trying to pick my brain or so-and-so from Chicago wants to pick my brain. And they were just trying to figure out why people were drawn to our show and us as a, as a duo. Oh, this guy is a big tv star he yeah. was on the amazing race last season so he has uh he has a pretty cool story himself yeah my story is a little different than theirs uh i grew up in a different kind of environment uh i was the guy who used to beat up the people that bullied them in school uh, my brother was six years older beat than me them. well you know no 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 they I stuffed never... they stuffed him. me in sorry the him he helped me he was the That's how it worked. i used my size to my advantage yeah 
So when I grew up, I, I was always looking to get out, get away from where I was. I always just wanted to be somewhere else and do something else, but I didn't know what it was. I just knew I wanted to be away. So I kind of stumbled into radio at late in life. I was 29. I know I don't look that old, but I was 29 <laughs> when I kind of stumbled into it. Or, or 24, I guess, if you really do it. But I didn't know how to get into radio. What, what was I supposed to do? How do I get in? So I went to a radio station. Can I come work here? No, you don't have no experience. What do you do? Well, I don't know. I'm funny. Put me on the radio. That's not how it works. So I went and I joined uh, the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Took six months of school. And the only reason I did that was to get an internship. I could care less about any of the stuff that I was learning there, which I was an idiot because I should have learned a lot more. Um, but I graduated the class. And when somebody like this came to my school, it was the morning show in Miami. It was the number one morning show down there. He came into the school just like this, and he was talking, and he doing exactly what we're doing, and I said, I want to come intern for your show. He goes, well, we're not looking for interns. I said, well, I'm coming to intern for your show, and you can't stop me. And he goes, good luck. So kind of like they did, sat and waited outside. I showed up to work, and I got there at 6 o'clock because I knew the show started at 6, but I'm an idiot. I thought everybody gets there and cracks the mic, and that's the way they do it. They're there at 4.30, so I'm outside, and they're already in the building. Didn't happen. Called in. Next day, I got there at 5. They still got in before me. So you know what? I slept in the parking lot the night before, and I'm like, nobody's getting into this building without me hearing it. Had my alarm set for 3 o'clock. Got there and sat in front of the door so nobody can get in until they saw who I was. And I said, remember, I'm coming to work for you. I'm coming to intern for you. When he walked in, do you remember me? Do you remember me? He goes, yeah, I remember you. I can't let you in the building because you're not an intern yet. I'm like, you're the man. This is your station. Let me in. Again, I'm an idiot. That's not how things work. So that day, he introduced me to the lady and filled out the paperwork. I got the internship. After about four or five hours of sitting outside of his office, just because he said, just wait here. Wait here. I'm busy. Just wait here. He just wanted to see how patient I was to see if I was going to leave. Four hours, that's without cell phones and texting and all that because I'm older than you guys. So I'm just sitting there for four hours testing my patience. So, <laughs> and that's how I got the internship. It was like he gave me the internship. And from that internship, I legally you're only supposed to intern for three months. I was there for seven. Um, he said, we're, we're going to get arrested for having you here, for making you work for free. and You need to leave. And I said, I'm not leaving. He took me to a radio convention. Well, not took me. He said, I'm going to a radio convention in August. And I said, I want to go. He said, you can't go. I said, I'm going. So I paid my own way and I went. As you can see, a trend here. I don't really listen to when people tell me I can't do things. <laughs> they see this. It's still to this day. I don't like it. So I went to this convention. A thousand of the m morning radio people from all across the country are standing there. The host of the show, who's well-respected, 15 years in the business at the time, gets up before the whole thing starts and says, my name, unfortunately, my intern name was Tool. Um, <laughs> he goes, this is Tool. He's my intern. I've never had an intern in 15 years in the business ever follow me to a radio convention. But he followed me, and he deserves a radio job. Somebody here needs to give him a job. That day, I had seven job interviews. Seven job interviews. Five job offers. And I left there with my first radio job. It's just perseverance. If you want it, you'll get it. And sometimes it takes a long time to figure out what it is that you want. And that's okay. But whatever it is that you choose, just go for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Because if you really love it, there's, no, there's nothing that can stop you. The passion will come through. We have a very strong Detroit tie, which is very funny with us and how we wound up here. Um, the show that we interned for came from Detroit in Philly. They were randomly, the night we were listening to the radio, on that particular moment, they were looking for interns when we literally left got fired from our college station. And that was the moment that we went and joined the show from Detroit. And then we were on the radio in Philly and uh, we started, we just worked our way up. We started doing a lot of specialty shows and did every holiday and worked everything that no one wanted to do because we wanted it. I was told I was too fat to work promotions so they wouldn't hire me in promotions. And it's, this is reality. This is what I had to deal with. And I'm just like, well, I'm going to make it. You're not going to tell me I'm too fat. I'm going to make it somehow. So we became board ops, kind of like what you guys do when you run the board in there, except there was, we weren't on the radio. Um, and we loved the station so much that, you know, we started creating our demos, putting them out there, and then they started flying us all around the country. And we kept saying no to every job. We were like, so we were so young and like, 
Oregon offered us mornings. And then we started uh, Cleveland for nights and Phoenix for nights. And I mean, up and down the East Coast, we were, we were literally everywhere. Yeah. And then we said, no. We said, we're going to take some time off. We're going to figure out what we want. And we had one of the, uh, in my opinion, the, if there's a top two stations that produce talent in radio, one is in Tampa, Florida, 93.3 FLZ. And KDWB is another one. And uh, they came to us for nights in, in Tampa, and we're like, holy crap. You yeah, know, we'll what do we do? On the beach. Yeah, right? It was, win- we'll it was winter. Florida. Yeah. We, we, we put them on hold, and then Chicago called us, and the program director said, I don't know who you are. I was told to hire you. I have two plane tickets, a limo to pick you up, contracts, and hotel suites waiting for you. And I'm like, do we go to market three for media? Which we were like, that's what everyone in the industry would say. It's top three market. Everybody wants to work New York, LA, Chicago. Everyone. We were all for that. But us. We went to, we went to learn our craft and do it right, which is why we're where we are now. Yeah. And which is why when we went down to Tampa, we didn't market three because they hired us because we were voice tracking out of that city because we work for iHeart where unfortunately it's, there's not as many live jocks. So yeah. one jock is tracking a whole lot of stations all around the country. So we were those guys. Now, it was a pleasure coming yeah, here and talking you to you guys. And uh, hopefully now you're friends with us. And if you need anything, you call up and ask for it. Yeah. So just say that we talked in your class, too. And we'll remember you. And let's get some social networking in here when you guys are doing radio. So if you have any questions, they'll be able to use that as well. After this, if you ever have any questions, just reach out to us on any social media. Facebook's probably the better place, the quickest place to respond. But reach out to us, and we'll, get, we'll answer any of your questions. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you, man.